What is up and welcome back everyone. You might think it's a nice spring day, but it actually is not. It is supposed to snow tomorrow, so we're trying to do this today. What we're doing today is working on my Forester behind me. We're doing actually a couple of things. So, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be installing a transmission cooler. Because, well, when you're off-roading your Subaru, you want to make sure you don't overheat the transmission. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing. We're doing a little bit of custom build, so I got some scrap metal. Um, and then I got essentially what's the biggest cooler that we can put in our Subaru. So it is a 678. Well, you could put a bigger one, but this is what Hayden Automotive recommends for heavy-duty loads. So we don't really need anything bigger than this. And this fits exactly in one side of the radiator supports and then we have all we'll need to install this is because it's a kit it's got hose and everything is a 3 8 um, splice little brass fitting some hose clamps and then we're going to be using some scrap metal to mount it to do a little bit of a custom work but that's not all we're doing today because we're changing the um, transmission fluid or we're going to be draining some of the transmission fluid I thought it'd be a good time to change my transmission fluid with some um, Subaru OEM stuff because I don't think it's ever been changed in this car and it's a good idea to do that. Another thing we're changing is we're actually going to be putting in the um, this actual genuine Subaru transmission filter. This is actually quite pricey because it's got a bunch of like kind of valve system in it so we're going to be changing this. Um, Subaru says it's a lifetime um, part but when you're almost at 400,000 kilometers it's probably a good idea to change it. So to get started on this, the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to go ahead and start draining the transmission fluid out of here. It's pretty self-explanatory, just find the bolt and undo it. Um, some people go ahead and pull the cover off, but I'm not looking that far in depth because I'm pretty sure this transmission doesn't got a super long life um, from what I've been putting it through. So if it dies, it dies, but we're just trying to extend the life a little bit because 400,000 kilometers is a lot for not ever changing the oil or the filter. So yeah, I'm going to jump under the car, undo the bolt and get it draining in my oil pan. This is a uh, 7 quarts, I think it's, um, or this is 12 quarts, the transmission filter or transmission fluid I believe is 7 quarts so this will be plenty enough. So we'll get this draining and then we'll talk about where we're going to mount the transmission cooler in here. All it took was the impact in a 16 millimeter socket and we got the drain off of the transmission filter, our transmission um, transmission, not the filter, and then we also got the filter off. Um, let's take a little bit of a closer look at what we're dealing with here. As I said, 400,000 kilometers, quite a bit, never been changed. Well, this is my filter, as you can tell, it's just coated in grease. I may or may not have an axle there that the boot fell off at one point and I fixed. Um, obviously, I didn't fix it very well because it's still spraying grease, but this is the interesting part. This is the fluid that came out of the car absolutely like fried. It is not even red anymore. And that's, I poured a little bit out of the um, bottle just to check the color against. This is what's supposed to, this is like the new fluid. So you could say the fluid was a little bit dirty, so I'm very glad that I'm doing this. But I've got the fluid still draining, it's still dropping down, so what we'll do now is we're going to go ahead and talk about the transmission cooler itself. So as I said, this is a heavy duty filter. So essentially what that means is it's a fair size filter. So we got some hose that we'll be using pretty much all of it, as well as we'll be using the cooler here. This is, as I said, biggest one um, they recommend for here. And that's ex exactly where we want to put it, just on the left hand side. This is known as a fin and plate style instead of the tube and fin. That just means uh, you can pack a little more cooling area and a little bit of smaller um, cooler, which is great because these four stars don't have a lot of room up front. In addition to that, we also got a couple fittings, which I don't think we're using the fittings as much as the hose clamps or um, these little, like, you can, they almost look like zip ties. They're supposed to go through your radiator and mount it. But as you can probably gather, using the steel, we're actually going to be doing something a little bit different. The only thing we'll actually have to remove on the Forester itself is this front grill. Some people remove the bumper, but because this Forester, when you remove the grill, you have pretty much access to the fr whole front side. We don't have to remove anything else. And it's super easy on these SGs. Pop a um, uh, screwdriver in here, 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 and then there's one on this side. And it allows you to pull it out. These little clips, I have them on the SCI too. And they're a little bit annoying, but they hold it really well and they're really easy to take off. So we're going to pop this off and take a look at what we're working with. With four clips off, we got the grill on the ground and we now have all the room for activities. So you can probably see now why I want to build my own bracket because we got essentially a hole right here and a hole or a bolt right here. So we put a piece of metal there 
and then we have another bolt down here. And then once we do that, even though we're only mounted to three sides, we got a super strong mounting point rather than putting those fins through my AC condenser in the rad to try to hold it on, especially if we're doing some pretty hardcore off-roading, it might bounce around a little too much for my comfort. And to mount it there, we're just gonna use some of this angle iron, I think. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go ahead and run a cut all the way across the middle of this and then essentially see if it bolts up. The one thing I am noticing is when I was looking at this originally, I didn't plan there's a little piece of metal sticking out here. I think I'm just gonna take the angle grinder and chop that off because there's no real point in you needing that because that I think for this little guy right here or some other thing, which obviously isn't there. So hack that off and then we'll have a nice flat surface to mount on this side. And then on this side, we already got the bolt and we'll just put it, sandwich it in between the AC condenser mount and this um, plate right here. And we'll get a nice surface to mount up our cooler. Also, I should probably end up painting this because this might not be the best. Referencing a couple of the many guides on the internet, for the transmission cooler, I went ahead and started making my own brace. First, I had to split the two sides of the angle iron with the angle grinder, which actually went pretty well now that I have a cutting blade. After, I took the edges off and smoothed out the cut. And all I can say is that I'm glad it's going behind the bumper. And an hour later, there we go. We have our bracket ready. Um, it's painted, it's cut, and it's ready to go. So I had to widen this last hole right here because it just barely made that corner. But as you can see now, we've went ahead, cut the piece, and actually I put a bolt in here just to make sure I could. I have to use um, needle nose pliers to get the bolt under and then screw it in. So that works, and then we actually just took out the bolt here, and that bolts right on. So this piece goes right in kind of behind the rad. So kind of hard to do with one hand, but it goes behind there, in there, and then bolts up to that, and there we go. We have our mount for our cooler. What we'll do then is attach the cooler itself, and then bring the tubing down, but while I was waiting for that to dry, because I painted it, I also went ahead and pulled one of the lines coming from the transmission, because um, as you guys know, the transmission actually cools through the rad, or heats, or whatever, um, and I pulled the line off of it, it came off. Here's the end. This end is really destroyed. I'm honestly not too worried, I cut it off, because look at that, it's just destroyed. So I'm gonna put new hose clamps on over here when we put in the actual, um, put in this guy. So then we can attach our hose, run it to the heater, and then run it back to this line that we pulled off. So the Subaru community is kind of undecided on which hose you should be pulling. Um, I see some people say put your cooler, your like after bucket cooler, after the radiator so then you can run it um, cold liquid to the transmission. But I live in Canada so I don't want to overcool my liquid because I've got a pretty solid um, transmission cooler here. So. I'm doing the other thing which is pulling it after it goes through the rad, so it comes up from the um, transmission, goes to the radiator, and then goes into the cooler, and then goes back to the transmission. That way, there's no way I can overcool my liquid, um, because if I had it the other way and it goes through the transmission cooler after it goes to the radiator, I possibly could overcool it, and well, it's not as damaging, it just doesn't shift as well. So now I'm essentially normalizing it. Um, through the radiator after the transmission cooler and that really works the best way and that's way I don't have or I have um, less of a chance of damaging anything it, even though cooling you'd have to really cool it but we'll just do it this way if you really wanted to be fancy you could put a thermostat in when it switches back and forth depending on the temperature but I'm not doing that because well we don't really need to um, this car isn't going to be driven in the winter at all and there we go, after some messing around with those bolts, we got it all mounted up. And as you see, the heater core, or the <laughs> heater core, the radiator is mounted to that bracket we installed in there. And it is pretty good. It's gonna be really hard for you guys to see, but I put another bracket down here and it mounts just to another hole on this like rear, or this center um, brace. So then this thing is not moving. Like, I don't wanna hit it and wreck the fins, but yeah, it's not moving anywhere. So the last step is to wire this all in and toss in some ATF.
Don't know why I said wire instead of plumb, but we're just gonna stick this on each end of the heater core. So it goes to right about here. Um, under, it's gonna be really hard for you guys to see that. I'm gonna stick some clamps on it, which are gonna be really hard to do, but stick some clamps on it. And then um, I'm gonna do that to both ends of this loop. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna figure out my runs, which is essentially just around this little bank here and then down in that corner. So super short run, um, and then tie it all in. Hey look, it's dark out, and I'm done. <laughs> well, I got the hoses all wired up. Thankfully, I have a light so I can show you kind of what's going on. First thing, I removed the coolant tank right there, and that's because it's kind of recommended in the guide, and I was like, ah, no, I don't need to do it. But you do really need to do it, because what you're gonna be doing is running your hose right, you guys can barely see it, but you're running it right under the mounting for the coolant tank, so, by having it out, you can actually see and feel what's going on. Once I got that out of the way, it was a little bit easier to go ahead and actually wire up these hoses. So it's gonna be hard for you to see, but that's the original hose right there still. And where's mine? Oh, there we go. You can just kinda see it right there. So that's the hose coming from the, um, or going to one of the two. That's one of the hoses for the line going to the cooler and then, gonna be hard for you to see and if you look way up there past that one that's kind of kinked right now I got to work out that kink um, way up there kind of in the center of the screen that's running to the cooler too that actually was the chopped up one I chopped up a little bit more off of it like there's a little J turn I chopped that right off and then I was able to put the little splicer in there a um, couple hose clamps and get it all connected up Here's a little bit better of a view too. So this is the original hose running to the radiator. This is the hose coming from our new radiator. And then this is the hose running to our cooler. So it goes here, it goes through our radiator, out here into our cooler, and then back, loops around, and then back into the system through here. So that's essentially how I have it all wired up. It's now time to put the fluid in because I put in the plug because I had a, just a couple of washers from my oil changes in here. And then I put the filter in. As I said, Subaru Genuine Filter because I know aftermarket ones get a little funky. So really, it's really easy to fill this up. Um, well, maybe not as easy as oil because oil is pretty easy and it's got an easier port. But what you want to do is you want to locate your one that says ATF. It'll say ATF on the side right here and that's what you're gonna to wanna to use. If you fill the other one, you're filling up your center diff and you're gonna have a bad day. So, we're gonna pull this guy out. Oh look, it's empty, what a surprise. We're gonna take our funnel, and I can't see where I'm going, but something like that, and fill it up. And there we go, so I just put some of the fluid in. I put six and a half, around seven. Um, according to what I've read, it uses approximately half a quart more, so we'll have to put it down and um, test it and go for a little drive, but not in today's video because as you can tell, I've been doing this a little while. Um, took a little bit longer as expected, or yeah, as expected, yeah, with all car stuff, it seems to take a while. Um, but what we'll have to do is go ahead, put the grill back on, um, make sure there's no leaks, and then that's pretty much it. So at least we have our cooler on, and I'm looking forward to going on some new trails and um, seeing how it works. I don't have a temperature sensor, but we'll probably know just off of um, how it's shifting because that old fluid was pretty dirty. So I hope this helps some of you guys that are looking to also put a transmission cooler in your Subaru Forester. And if not, feel free to drop a comment below and I can help, or I'll try to help in any way that I can. Um, next video, we're gonna be working on modding the tent a little bit more, so be sure to be tuned in for that. But that's gonna be it for today. So as always, peace out and stay humble.